um, ultra functional, inexpensive, not lightweight. So here's the differences in bags. Hey, welcome back to my channel. I'm in the backyard again because I didn't want to take these three sleeping bags up to a nice filming location on the motorbike. So I'm, I'm back here. And these are gonna make sense when I start getting into examples of what I'm talking about in the two out of three rule. So if you're in the process of buying new moto camping gear, then you're trying to evaluate what to use. Moto camping falls somewhere between car camping and backpacking. It really should fall on the backpacking side of things because it's backpacking gear is lightweight, it's smaller, it makes it easier to pack, it keeps your overall weight on the bike down. But that's not always possible to do based on what our needs are and how much comfort we want to have. Through my experience, I've learned to apply the two out of three rule. And if you're not familiar with it, that's what we're going to talk about today. So all gear has three characteristics that can be applied to it. But of course, the two out of three means you only get two out of these three. So what are those characteristics? Well, the first one is lightweight. So is the gear lightweight? The next thing is the functionality of it. How functional is this gear going to be? Is it going to meet your needs? And then the last one is inexpensive. And this is the challenging one. I have these sleeping bags here that I'll go through and explain how each of these fits in two of the three categories and how I eventually came to choose what I use. Now, this can also be applied to tents, to sleeping pads, to cooking uh, gear, pots, pans, you know, pretty much everything you can think of putting on the bike. This is what I'm talking about. If you want ultra lightweight gear that's really, really functional and meets all your needs in all the different conditions, it's not going to be inexpensive. If you want ultra functional gear that's inexpensive, it's not going to be lightweight. And then if you want lightweight gear that's inexpensive, it's probably not going to be very functional for you. And I have a sleeping bag that fits in each of these categories. And what I did to select these and why I moved away from it and then decided that I needed ultra lightweight and ultra functional, which did not come uh, inexpensively. But there's reasons for that. So stick around and we'll talk about how to apply this to sleeping bags, knowing that you can also use the two out of three rule to apply to other moto camping gear. All right, when I got back into moto camping, I was using some really old gear. I found that camping in the mountains, no matter what time of year you're camping, you're likely to face near freezing temperatures even in the summer. And so I needed to upgrade what I had. I went a little extreme as I was trying to figure out this whole packing the bike thing. And I bought this huge bag. But the great thing about this bag is it was a zero degree rating. I don't know if that's completely accurate, but what I was looking for is something that was going to be really, really warm. And this is what I ended up with. It is not lightweight and it is not small. And I'll show you as I pack this bag up just how big it is. But it served my purpose of keeping me warm and it wasn't terribly expensive. So this is one of the examples. So let me get this bag tucked in here and you'll see uh, just how big it is. I That bag is, is tucked in here. This thing is huge for packing on a motorcycle. I think I have a, a picture of it I'll show. It, um, it kept me warm, but it was tough to get packed on the bike because it is huge. Uh, now, my entire camping kit, sleeping bag, roll, pad, um, bag, clothes, is about this size. Um, functionally, work great. Lightweight, uh, size-wise, huge but was relatively inexpensive. So that's the first example of how the two out of three rule applies to sleeping bags. So next I tried to go with something lighter and inexpensive. So I got this bag. It was rated at like 30 degrees survival, which I knew it wasn't actually gonna be comfortable at those temperatures, but I thought maybe I could layer up in my sleeping. I could maybe put a liner in it, uh, you know, a small liner, but keep everything small. Um, what I found was, 
any temperatures below 50 degrees, this bag was cold. Yes, it was light. Yes, it was easy to pack on the bike, but it did not meet my needs um, from a functionality standpoint. So um, lightweight and inexpensive, but completely uh, not functional for what I was trying to do. So I had to scrap this bag. Now I'll show you real quick uh, just how much smaller this bag was from the other one. And I think weight wise, it's two pounds, two and a half pounds, so not terribly heavy. All right, so here's the, the lightweight, inexpensive bag packed down. So it's considerably smaller than the previous bag. It was a lot easier to pack in places, but uh, it did not keep me warm in those nights where we're getting down into the 30s. I learned that the hard way. Having to put all my clothes on at night, I don't really like doing that. Um, I know some people that keep things light will do that, but um, I'm more interested in being comfortable. Sleeping in clothes is not one of those ways. So, um, lightweight, inexpensive, not very functional. So, let's move on to the next bag, which was um, lightweight and ultra functional, so you know what that means. We'll go through it. Okay, and then the last one, which is uh, lightweight and ultra functional. I've slept in this bag down into, I think, the uh, high teens. I had to layer up a little bit, um, but in 30, 40 degree temperatures, I can sleep in this thing very comfortably. I rarely zip it up. I think when it starts getting into the low 30s, high 20s, then I finally start zipping it up. It packs down ultra small. Now the key to this is it was not inexpensive. This bag was uh, at least four times as much as the previous bag. So I had to pay some money for comfort and lightweight. But was it worth it? Absolutely. This is my go-to bag year round, especially in the mountains. Now if I was to go someplace and camp in the desert, would I want this bag? Probably not. But for majority of the riding and camping I do, this is what I needed. So the two out of three rule definitely applied to all of these bags and their functionality. So I'll uh, pack this bag up real quick just to show you uh, the size of it and then we'll do a quick comparison and then some final thoughts on applying the two out of three rule. So this is the um, lightweight, ultra functional bag and you can see how um, small it packs down. It uh, weighs probably about the same, uh, maybe a little bit heavier but packed down um, as small as the inexpensive, uh, lightweight, not very functional bag. So you can see the differences in here. And then if I pick up the other bag, which this was the um, ultra functional, inexpensive, not lightweight. So here's the differences in bags um, and how I applied the two out of three rule. So I hope you found this helpful and gives you some ideas of how to select uh, moto camping gear uh, like I had said earlier, you can apply this to tents, you can apply this to sleeping pads, you can apply this to cooking gear, uh, even stoves. There's a lot of different areas uh, from moto camping and borrowing from backpacking. But those three criteria of being um, lightweight, ultra functional, and inexpensive, you get two out of three. Are there some exceptions? Of course, there's always exceptions. But in, for general rule of thumb on buying moto camping gear, these, this is what you can apply. So again, I hope you found this useful and it uh, inspires you to get out and do some moto camping, get out on your bike, get some new gear, test it out. So um, thanks for joining me and I will see you out there.